Welcome to Sense and Nonsense A to Z, where we pick topics based off of the letter of the day. Today is episode six of season one, featuring the letter F. We're family and we're your hosts, A, T, and Z. So let's get started. How about a Norwegian hello? Ven dog. Say again? Ven dog. It's it's spelled Ven dog. F-I-N-D-A-G. And it's pronounced Ven dog, which Ven means dog. good day. Good day. Good day. Ven dog. Ven dog. And this is Norwegian? Norwegian. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're getting fancy, like like we've we been saying. Yeah, we're getting fancy. Yeah. So what's going on, Z? Well, I finally locked in French toast for my son. Oh, yes. He likes bread though, right? Well, he likes specific kinds of bread. Like he likes the Pepperidge Farm cinnamon bread. Doesn't everybody? I, I hope so. <laughs> I and, <laughs> and I make it, you know, with that bread. Oh, sure. And I've got to do it specifically. Like you can't let this, the bread sit in the egg mixture. <laughs> you have to you just like too, too long, right? It's too long. You just got to like dip, flip, dip out. <laughs> into the pan but now we are very solid with it he asks awesome. for it he asks for it he That's asks great. for it yeah cool. so cool yeah we're in good uh, excellent i know it's exciting yeah. yeah well talk about french i got something i got a story for you with a uh, sense and nonsense involved regarding french dressing though not french bread okay you want to hear this one sure Back in 1950, the FDA enforced a strict policy of standards of identity towards French dressing to avoid some food fraud. Anyway, French dressing, French dressing is like one of the only dressings that has this regulation. So it has to be like at least 35% vegetable oil and it needs to have some sort of acidity like vinegar, lemon juice, lime juice, that, that sort of thing. And of course, there's other standards that needs to be a certain color, but blah, 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 blah. But this has to do with the identity. So you can't call it French dressing unless it has what the FDA wants it to have, period. So some of these salad dressing producers have been dancing around this regulation and just call it a different name. There is an association of dressings and sauces that has been fighting this since 1998, just saying that it's outdated. You know, it's like, come on, get with the times. So in December of 2020, the FDA finally agreed to lift those standards. But here's the second part of why I'm bringing this up, because if this isn't nonsense, for sure, this is nonsense. It took them since December of 2020 until this past January, for the FDA to release a final ruling. And then in their final ruling, which was 14 pages long, it was to take effect in another 30 days. It's like, it's like all this stuff just to lift these identity standards, isn't it? I just find it just ridiculous. This is what our taxes are going to? My point exactly. 14 page document. Just to lift to decide the decide to stop yeah. being a ball buster regarding the name of French dressing. Exactly. So they can throw a little bit more whatever in there and it's still French dressing now. Is that ridiculous? Yeah. Yeah. What the F? <laughs> Today is episode F. F and I'm not allowed to curse. Ain't that no. an F in shame? <laughs> <laughs> I've got some um, F questions for you. <laughs> you do? Yeah, you want to hear some uh, F questions? Yeah, I'm all up for F questions. Okay, so every topic has an F in it. Okay, all right, you get right. the idea. Yes. Qu question number, <laughs> you, I know you know it. Okay, <laughs> question number one. Is the glass half full or half empty? I try very hard to make it half full. <laughs> okay. Sometimes right. it really looks half it's empty. <laughs> yeah. But I more. try to focus on the half full part. Yeah, yeah. It's a mental thing, I know. It is. Yeah. Okay, question number two. Fries or onion rings? Oh, fries. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Here's one you're going to have to think about a little bit. Okay. What's fantastic? Oh. <laughs> My kid eating French toast. There you go. That's, That's fantastic. fantastic. 
Okay. My picky eater has expanded his horizons a little bit. That's fantastic. It is. All right. Next question. Mm -hmm. Crooners, Frank Sinatra or Dean Martin? Got to go with Frank. Got to go with Frank. Absolutely. Old blue eyes. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. I'm a D. Martin person. All right. Yeah. That's a good choice, oh, too. Oh, but I got to go with Can't go wrong with either one of these. I know. Oh, I, know. I mean. Okay, here's an odd one. Okay. When leaving a party, first or last? Mm. If I have to choose between the two, it's first. Mm. Yeah, for it's me, too. first. Yeah. And See ya. Again, I'm usually go. the first to be there. <laughs> I'm usually yeah. the first to be there, and I'll be the first to leave. Yeah. All right. Vacation, Maine or Florida? Oh, God. <laughs> Got to pick one. Oh, uh, Maine. <laughs> <laughs> they have how, really... come I, how come I know why Florida is a no? <laughs> yeah, but you know, yeah. they have really big bugs in Florida. <laughs> and I'm, I don't like, I don't You're like big into bugs. bugs. No, yeah, this, this state right here is pushing my threshold for bug the tolerance. Bugs. Know, North Carolina is tough. Boy. It's tough. It's very those tough. Are, those roaches Ugh. are unreal. I mean, this is the first place I've ever lived that I need a bug service. I know. I've lived in, in three different states. Yeah. No, yeah. four. And this is the first yeah, place. Four. Yep. Okay, next question. Mm-hmm. Favorite food? Oh my goodness. I, I don't have a favorite food. You don't have a favorite food? No. To pick one thing for me out of an array is very difficult. Hmm. Okay. I don't have a favorite food. I would say breakfast. Okay. I don't I have think, a favorite. I think breakfast is a different I know. <laughs> I know. I don't have a favorite food. No, huh? No. Okay. I mean, most people would say something like, I don't know. Pizza. pizza. Or, uh-huh. yeah. No, but yeah. pizza is not my favorite food. No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying. I know, but yeah. I, that's what I mean. I just, I don't, I, it, I'm very changeable. So whatever my favorite food is changes. Mm-hmm. Like I'm a little OCD, you know? <laughs> Mine's cheese, something. just for the record. <laughs> cheese Jeez. is my favorite. Yeah. I love cheese. It's my favorite. Yeah. I, know. I know. It's not good for you too, but what are you going to do? Yeah. Okay. Next question. Next. Fantasy Island. Or Gilligan's Island. Oh, interesting. Fantasy Island. Really? Yeah, because they have so much more there. I mean, they're always struggling on Gilligan's Island. (laughs) They are, but it's more fun. It's, who's to say? It's Fantasy (laughs) Island. I could could change up my fantasy. I'm like, all right, I'm sick of this. Give me something else. They have food. They have, like, interesting people. Okay. All right. I mean, how many coconut radios can you really make? They were genius. <laughs> <laughs> the, professor, really cool. the professor was a genius. The I'm professor was you. awesome. He, he was awesome. Okay. Do you use the word fabulous? Absolutely. You do? Yeah, absolutely fabulous. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Here's the last question. What percentage do you drive in the fast lane? Most of the time. I do would you say really? I would say, yeah, probably uh 75% of the time. I try to stay out of the fast lane. Okay. I mean, I, I I'll drive in it, don't get me wrong, but I do my best to get in, get out, get over. Yep. Not me. I'm in it. I'm in it for the most part. If somebody wants to pass me though, I'll I'll get out of the way. Mm-hmm. You know, but I'm usually I'm usually going a little bit faster than most traffic because when mm-hmm. I, when I'm in the car, I'm going somewhere. So yeah. if I'm on the highway, you know, just driving around town, no, but if I'm on a highway, I'm going somewhere. So please, please move. <laughs> so please stay in the right line so I can go around you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, but if some, if, if I'm, if I see somebody coming up on me and I know they want to go faster than me, I have no problems moving. Yeah, I'm, not I do one the of, same. I'm not a person who'll same. camp out there for no reason and just, yeah. you know, tool around. I'm yeah. usually, cause I'm usually passing. Yeah. That's why I'm there. Yeah. My only thing is with the fast lane is that the cops usually focus on that lane, you know? So I, I, do I don't know that that's the case so much anymore because a lot of people 
are weavers. You see that happening? Oh, all the time. And um, those are the ones that I've been noticing are getting dinged more than anything else. Like if oh, you're yeah. just, yeah, if you're just minding your business and you're going now, if going, you're flying, going with the flow. yeah, going if with you're the flow. if you're really flying, then that's yeah. a thing. But yeah, yeah, if you're just you know steadily passing but not being obnoxious, right? So that was it. That was the last one. Yeah. Yeah. I try to, I try to get a little creative with them. Yeah. No, they're good. good. Yeah, do you use the word fabulous? I tend not to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't roll off my tongue at all. No. I, I do say it. I mean, not as a constant word in my repertoire. A lot of people use that word. I know it's overused. But it's I, overused. But yeah. if something's fabulous, I'm going to say that's fabulous. <laughs> okay. You know? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, yeah. I do have a favorite food. Well, there you go. <laughs> Good. What Good. is it? Cake. Cake? Cake. Okay. I, I love, love cake. I love cake. Okay. I, I, I will never turn down cake. Okay. Um, I don't like icing necessarily. You like just the cake. I like the cake, the, the bread kind of cake. Yes. Yeah. Like, so okay. like in a cupcake, if it's got a ton of icing on it, I like scrape a lot of it off. I'll just leave a thin layer of icing so I can eat the cake. Cause I don't want it to be overly sweet. Right. But right. I love like the cake part. I love like, like chocolate cake. I don't really like chocolate, but I love chocolate cake. Okay. I like carrot cake, but with no raisins, oh. carrot cake. Love carrot cake. I love cake. carrot cake. Yeah. Love cheesecake, even though it's. But it's not cakey. But cheesecake is more cheesy. It is, but I'm still going to relegate it to cake because it has <laughs> cake in the name. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even ice cream cake. Like, I'm I'm not over the moon about ice cream cake, but I like the jimmy. So I'll eat like an inch to the left and an inch to the right and just eat that strip from the middle <laughs> with the jimmies and the, like the Carvel cake. Yeah. So, yeah. well, they're not, not the jimmies. It's the crushed up cookies. The, the crushed like. up cookies, whatever they, yeah, yeah. those things. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah. yeah that's that's like why I part. like the football cakes because they cover that. With yes. The, yes. Yes. My so, yes. Yeah. So my favorite food, I was, I think I was stuck before thinking of like entree food. Yeah. But, yeah. but I don't have one of those, but cake, hey, cake is food. Yeah. Cake, like pound cake. I'll take some pound cake. I'll take angel food cake, mm -hmm. you know, Cake, you're pretty safe with me with cake. There you go. Yeah. yeah so, cool. yes, I do have a favorite food. Thank goodness, because right. I was like, feeling like a, I was feeling <laughs> so weird. You were feeling left out. I was like, how could I know I have don't a favorite have food? Favorite food. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a little fun with some sense and nonsense F edition. All right. Okay, so the F topic is flowers. Flowers. Okay. Flowers. Okay. So sense or nonsense, there are over 200,000 types of flowers around the world. Sense. You're correct. There's over 400,000. Wow. With 35,000 of them being roses. Wow. Yeah. People yeah. love to do hybrids and make new species yeah. of roses. It's a, it's a thing. It is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Question number two, sense or nonsense? The gardenia is the most fragrant flower. Gardenia. Makes sense. It's actually the jasmine. Jasmine. Is the most fragrant. And that's why it's used in perfumes the most too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have the third question. Ready? Okay. okay. Sense or nonsense? Cut irises need to be in a vase on their own or else they'll kill the other cut flowers. What? Cut irises. Um, that's so specific. I'll say sense. It's nonsense. Oh, it's not irises. It's daffodils. Daffodils. So they're poisonous to other flowers. So they secrete their sap. Uh huh. And if you have daffodils, keep them separate. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Cause I well, always tend to do daffodils and tulips together because they come out pretty much at the same time, you know, so you yeah. clip, 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 throw them in a vase. So yeah, keep them separate. Okay, good to know. But yep. I scored poorly on this sense of nonsense. 
Uh, you got one out of three on this one. Oof. That's right. You, you batted a thousand last time. You bat, you're about batting 500 now with all of these. I don't want to bat 500. <laughs> you're doing okay. Okay, some okay. factoids on flowers. Uh, all right. Broccoli is actually considered a flower. Yeah. In the, yeah. In the 1600s, tulip bulbs were more valuable than gold. Really? How about that? Can you imagine? Wow. I need, I need some milk. Here's some tulip bulbs. <laughs> yeah. I'll yeah. trade you. Yeah. I'll trade you. Yeah. Okay. 60% of the fresh cut flowers in the U.S. comes from California. Mm -hmm. Gerbera daisies, of which a lot of people call them Gerber daisies, can help you sleep. They emit oxygen and absorb carbon monoxide and toxins. So if you have them, cut them, keep them by your bedside. It'll help you sleep. Really? I don't like them. You don't like Gerber babies or Gerber, Gerber babies? No. They're cute. They're pretty. Yeah. They're pretty. They're, they're plain. It's a plain yeah. thing. I yeah. get it. Okay. So the acidity of hydrangea soil determines the flower's colors. Below pH 7 is blue and purple. Above pH 7 is pink and red. So if you want blue and purple, use coffee grinds to lower the pH. And if you like pink and reds, use lime to make it more acidic. Interesting. Yeah. That's happened to my roses too. The different pH in the soil that? has changed my roses colors. I know because yeah. I never planted the rose colors that I get. I wonder if you can throw some coffee change. grinds and I know uh, I've heard to throw banana peels yeah. and I've done that to my, yeah, I've done that to my roses. The mother-in-law used with her hydrangeas, mm -hmm. she used to put, a, she used to put a bottle of beer well, that'll change it. And hers were always purple. It's like, wow, yours are really purple. She goes, I put a bottle of beer. It's like, beer? Really? But I never, I, I did some research and I couldn't find anything with the beer. All I found was the coffee grinds was the recommendation. Huh. To make, yeah. To make them blue and purple. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. So some information. It's good info. I try. <laughs> Okay, so my letter FP is regarding basketball, specifically the NBA, regarding free throws and foul shots. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start with some stats just to give you some basis here. Per team average, so we have 30 teams. The best are the Sixers. They're at 81.6%. They hit that many of their free throws, so that's their percentage. Okay. Okay. The worst is, are the Houston Rockets at 71%. That's not that My, bad. No. Well, but I mean, the Kinda. spread. The spread. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. My Knicks, my beloved Knicks uh -huh. that I've been watching since I was a little kid are at 75%. They're number 25 out of 30. Jeez. Now, here's another stat that's pertinent to my story here. Per player, league average. So the whole average per the whole league per each player is 77%. Only seven players are above 90%. Wow. All right. So nine, they hit like nine out of more than nine out of These 10. are professional basketball players. We're talking about the NBA. We're not talking about We're talking college. about We're not, dudes yeah, or, standing yeah. on a line. Yes. During nobody trying to block them, nobody in your them, face doing nothing. Right. They're right. standing nope. on a line making shots. That's right. So it's you, the line, the ball, the basket. All right. Okay. Of course, you have the audience doing sure, their thing, sure. but okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. But only seven players are over 90%. And sadly, two out of the seven mm -hmm. are New York Knicks. We have quickly and we have reddish. However, they're not the ones who get fouled. If you're mm -hmm. going to foul somebody, you're not going to foul somebody who could Make show you shot. up here. Yeah, 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 exactly. You're going to foul somebody who's at like 60%. It's like, no, no, go get that guy. You know, yeah. we need a foul. Right. But here's the point. So like we we're saying, nobody's blocking you. Nobody's in your way. You stand and you shoot. This is something you could practice all by yourself. Right. It's not like you need your team. All you need is yourself, a ball, and a basket. That's all you need. As a matter of fact, my son and I did this last week on a basketball court with a soccer ball. Oh, cool. I mean, and I, made, I made more than half of my shots. And I am there not a go. professional player. 
exactly. And, you know, I mean, once you get to the flow and right. you do, I mean, these guys grew up doing this, right. it ends up being like muscle memory, right. right? So they should just be able to almost close their eyes and just shoot. Fire them off, fire them fire, off. Aim and shoot. And that's mm -hmm. it. All right. So the Knicks, the last two games, they played the Miami Heat and lost 115 to 110. They made 26 out of 36. So they missed 10 and they lost by five. Then against the Sixers, who are the best free shooters mm -hmm. right now, right? Mm -hmm. Free throw shooters. They lost 125 to 109. They made a whopping 22 of 35. So they missed 13 and lost by six. These free throws, it just makes a difference, especially in a close game. So the old adage of practice makes perfect definitely applies here. Does it though? Because they've been applying these skills for years and years and years, and they're still not making most of these the guys, shots. Yeah, most of these guys are in their what? The average age is late 20s, early 30s. So you figure at least 10, 15 years they've been practicing this. They've got to be practicing just like, you know, with Luke guy. Yeah. He's, a, you know, you practice when you're a kid. Yeah. That's all I used to do. Because, you know, you don't have anybody else. So you bounce it down to the basketball court, bounce it all the way back home, you know, and you, you shoot, shoot, shoot until you're tired and, you know, and that's it. Right. It's, and then it. when you get in a high school, you got to make teams, you yeah. know, you got to yeah. make teams. Yeah. In college, you got to make teams. Then you got to get drafted. Then you got to, you got to so earn this your whole spot. Time. I mean, it, it's just, here's another word for you. F frustrating. This mm -hmm. is so frustrating that yeah. they're, you know, these teams are losing and it's like, and, and how about if they lose by like one point? It's like, oh, all you yeah. needed to do was make hit one, one more, more shot. shot and you could have gone into overtime mm -hmm. or make two more shots and you would have won. You know, it's just, it's just yeah. mind-boggling. There's anyway. a lot of room there. There's a lot of room there. Yeah. To be honest, this is the same kind of thing with batting average. I mean, if you're batting 500, that means you only get a hit half the time. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's and, good. And 300 is a damn good batting average. Right? And so, that, I'm sorry, but what other thing in life where you're like, oh, good, one out of three. You're yeah, doing or, great. Or you're saying, right, or you're saying three out of 10 is yeah, acceptable. Yeah, th I, when, I when know, is three I, out of 10? I would get five that's not even a passing grade. <laughs> no, it's not. I know. I know. Three what, out of 10, you, you failed, buddy. Yeah. You need to retake that or you're failing that class. Yeah. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's like, come on, and you're getting paid millions for this. Yeah, mega bucks. So, and it's their life. It's their life. their life. It's their whole life. And it's a game. It's something that they love. That's why they do it. Well, you'd hardly know. Yeah, well. You'd hardly know with the way some yeah. of these people act. True. It's definitely not for love of the game. It's for love of the money. Yes, yeah, for some, I'm sure. And the egos sure. are massive too. It's like, if you're going to walk around with that kind of ego, your, your shot average better be right up there, buddy. Yeah. You yeah. know, or close your mouth. Thank like you. Like I said, only seven out of the whole league, which is, oh my God, like 400 and some, 450 players. Great. Right. There's only That's seven fabulous. of them. There's another only seven of them. 90. Of, yeah. Didn't you ask me if I use that word? Fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. That's fabulous. <laughs> Frustrating. So uh -huh. anyway, okay. Do you have an F one? Of course I do. Okay. Which one is yours? My F pet peeve is not being able to say the F word on, on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the F word <sighs> is one of my favorite words. Is it one of your favorites? It is one of my favorite words. This is such a versatile word. I love this word. It is an emphatic word. It is a word that can convey feeling like no other word in the English language, this word. I hmm. love this word. Hmm. And one of the things that I love about it, I watched Craig Ferguson. I love Craig Ferguson. Oh, I And um, in one of his stand-up specials, he kind of relays this. And it's not the whole picture, but it's a bit of a picture. He loves to curse too. And the F word is his favorite. Do you remember what they used to do on his show? Yeah, they would when put he, like a little flag and do uh, like, la. <laughs> or la. <laughs> yeah, like that. I loved his show. The theme song on that show. Yeah. I loved that theme well, he song. He did that theme song. I he know did. he did. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. He's great. 
Mm -hmm. But he, he relays it this way. He's like, uh, you know, if you go up to one of your friends that has new pants and you're like, Hey, those are nice new pants. Your friend's like, Oh, thanks. Yeah. That's great. But if you go up to your friend and you're like, great effing pants, he's like, <laughs> thank you. I love them. You know, they're so, you know, it just evokes this feeling that you can't really get any other way for good or to, you know, piss somebody off, whatever right. it is, you know, right. you can convey with this word, this one word, so many things in, in the language. And I love that. So I am a big fan of the F word. I, I don't understand why we in our society have this connotation over curse words, like, like there's somehow naughty, you know, cause mm. back in the day, not acceptable. Yeah. Not yeah. acceptable, you yeah. know, in society. And, you know, back in the day, the S word mm -hmm. was the word that yeah. was the word for oh, it. Yeah. There was no oh, yeah. other word. That was it. Yeah. And then somehow it became, oh, you don't say that in polite society. Oh, no, we can't do that. And oh, no, you can't curse in front of your kids. It's like, really? You, you think that's real life? That that's not happening? You know? <laughs> oh, my know. kid said a curse. Oh, no. It's like, well, if you treat it like it's something that is a bad thing to do, of course, they're going to do it. Right. What did George Carlin have? Probably so much because he loved that word, too. Seven words. That's it. George Carlin had the seven words and he used to do a skit with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a great word. I love the word. It's not like I'm going to go up to the Pope and use it, but you know, <laughs> <We hope not. laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but it can convey a meaning emphatically. It can tell somebody that you have had it. Now you are done because I am now using this word and you better know that if you push me any further, there's going to be serious problems or it can be because you're, you couldn't be more thrilled. So I love this word. I'm very sad that I can't use it, but I will defer to you because this is the request that you have made. And so I'm trying I am not following, to, I am Thank following you. it, but I can't say that I'm effing happy about it. <laughs> time for f band sounds good all right there's only one f band mm -hmm. when you think of the letter f it's the foo fighters it is the foo fighters yep yep f f yeah i should have a tattoo like dave on the base of my neck you'll never see it <laughs> Like my, hair, my hair is a lot longer than his is, but his <laughs> is long. You'll never see his either. No. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. There's nothing left to lose. And that was a great album. That, that was a great album. The, that he had the yeah. tattoo on the base of his yeah. neck. Yeah. We all know that Dave Grohl was the drummer for Nirvana. And yeah. after Kurt Cobain died in 1994, mm -hmm. he considered being the drummer for Tom Petty. Can you believe that? I what can. a waste that would have been. Yeah, but you know, he he was really depressed after yeah. Kurt Cobain died, and he just kind of like sat he was on the couch. He yeah, was young. he did nothing for like eight months, and then he decided to kind of see that, kind of yeah. just shake himself out of the funk that he was in, yeah. and he just went and he recorded a bunch of stuff on his own. He and had a whole bunch of songs written at the time. A whole bunch. So, yeah. So, and, and he slapped a name on it. He took that cassette and he put it out in the world. And then he got that call from Tom Petty to be on, uh, I think it was mm -hmm. Saturday Night Live, as a matter of fact. He's done Saturday Night Live a couple of times. Just, yeah. By the yeah. Way, yeah. And then can you imagine the phone call of having to tell Tom Petty, like, that was cool, but I'm going to go do this thing on my own. Oh, yeah. Thank goodness he did that because he's not just your typical drummer. I mean, no. this guy is talented. Well, when Foo Fighters came out, I remember everybody being like, the drummer from Nirvana is going to play that, guitar. That skinny, that skinny kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's, yeah. he's going to be a front man? And everybody yeah. was like, oh, I don't know. And then you saw him and then you heard him and you were like, yeah, that effing yeah. drummer from Nirvana. Yeah, yeah. He's awesome. killer. Yeah. Awesome. What's cool is that the band has been influenced by these, especially by these three bands. There's a whole bunch of bands they've been influenced by, but the three, and it just makes so much sense to me why I love this band. 
they're influenced by three of my favorite bands, the Beatles, Queen, and Led Zeppelin. They played with Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones. They played with Brian May and Roger Taylor. And they played multiple times with Paul McCartney. As a matter of fact, they asked Paul McCartney to play drums. Taylor took the lead on the vocals. So he wasn't drumming. So they yeah. were like, well, so Dave, why don't you drum? And he's like, oh, geez, I don't know. And they thought about it and they were like, let's give McCartney a call. And uh, he agreed to do it. Isn't that What's, cool? What song? And this, do you know what the song? song? Yeah, yeah. It's on their album, Concrete and Gold. The song is Sunday Rain. And if you listen to it, it's very much influenced by the Beatles and uh-huh. McCartney. Uh huh. You know? That's so cool. It kind of makes sense that they asked him to come in and play drums. That's awesome. Yeah. And he's a hell of a drummer, by the way, McCartney. People I, don't realize what a great musician yeah, he, this man he's, is. He played drums on a lot of Beatles songs. Mm-hmm. People just don't realize it. They just figure it was Ringo, but it was Paul. Well, I remember in that McCartney 321 when he was talking about selling the ideas for some of the songs and the drum tracks and him being like, no, I want you to do it like this. And, the, and Ringo being like, then you do it. <laughs> and he was like, all right, I, I will. I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not surprised by that with all the stuff that I've I've seen, especially recently about uh, the Beatles and Paul McCartney. But I, I think before it would have surprised me more. So speaking of Taylor, he's he's a great drummer. Oh, I love his style. I think he's fantastic. When they got him as a drummer, it was because their previous drummer was not kind of up to Dave's standards. So he wasn't playing on the records. Dave is a perfectionist. He is a perfectionist. Yeah. Yeah. So he re-recorded everything that William did. No kidding. And it kind of broke that dude's heart. And I can see it from his point of view. I get it. But I get it from Dave's point of view. It's like this is. He wanted it perfect. He wanted it perfect. And it just wasn't doing it for him. So when they found Taylor, you know, they they all think Taylor was a a beast. He was a monster behind the drums, you know, and he is, you can, he was the right drummer for that band. No doubt. How about all the videos? Oh God. And him dressing up as a girl a bunch of times too. I've heard Dave say this, like they take the music very seriously. So that's where they have fun. That's their humor outlet doing the videos. Yeah. And they love to act. You can see that they love that. He's such a ham, you know, yeah, he's yeah. such a ham. And he, yeah. and Dave's got his fingers in everything now. He's got those paws all over the place. He's writing, he's directing, yeah. he, they're yeah. acting in yeah. the movie now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The, the new one just came out. Yeah. It's called uh, Studio 666 in theaters. I mean, I mean, they're just, they are, you know, turning into a phenomenon, really, mm-hmm. the Foo Fighters. And they, and they should because they've got 12 Grammy Awards. Yeah. Four of them are for best rock album. What was great was that Paul McCartney inducted them into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. As he should have. Their first year of eligibility. Absolutely. That was fantastic. And I, we, We've mentioned this before, but Paul McCartney in that speech was correlating the similarities of his and Dave Grohl's career. Yeah. And they are very similar. Mm-hmm. They are very similar They're friends. in their story. They're friends now. I yeah. know. I yeah, know. And they should be because mm-hmm. they're awesome. Yep. What's your favorite song? Oh, my favorite Foo Fighters song has to be, there are so many good ones, but it has to be so All My ones. Life. All My Life. Oh, I love the change. I love how that starts and I love yeah. all the changes in yeah. that song. It's, it's fantastic. It's, it's my favorite. And I think my second would be The Pretender. That would be my second favorite. Yeah. Talk about a lot of changes. Yeah. A lot of changes in yeah. that song, too. Mm-hmm. Never what Surrender. About, oh, mine? What about you? Yeah. Learn to Fly. Oh, that's a good one, too. Learn to Fly. That's a good one, too. I even love the video on that. It's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. How, um, many, how many people does he play in that oh, video? Pilot, you know? flight attendant. Yeah. <laughs> the heavy set woman. Yeah. Have, yeah. <laughs> Himself. Yeah. The young yeah. girl in the pigtails asking for the <laughs> autograph. It's cute. So Seriously. many, so many. Yeah. I love his lyrics. His lyrics are surprising, but the music, the music mm-hmm. just like hits you in your core. Yeah. You know, it's like amazing. Like that video, when that thing breaks, and all that oh, yeah, 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 thing yeah, comes yeah, flying yeah, out. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. that was the like perfect 
analogy. Whoever came up with that, it was so perfect because that's what it feels like when you're listening to that song. All of a sudden, everything just bursts forth, you know, and then you're just jamming and rocking out and you can't not. You can't yeah. just stand there stoic during that song. It just, it can't happen. <laughs> and I don't. No, me either. I was listening to it the other day and I was driving. Uh -huh. And then after, when it goes into the second part, it really, mm. really hits you. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it just builds and builds and builds and it starts hitting you. Yeah. Whoever was watching me is going, <laughs> this lady is crazy. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's crazy. It's almost like a driving hazard when you're listening <laughs> yeah. to it. It's what you got. Music that makes it makes you move and that moves you. What, what more can you ask for? Hey, I listen to them when I work out. They're it's great to work out to. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> if I'm feeling like I'm in a funk and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I just gotta, I just gotta move. I gotta do something. I'm stuck. I put on Foo Fighters mm -hmm. and it just energizes you and it just makes you move your energy. And, and then I'm like, all right. And then I can tackle the thing that sure. I need to do. It's motivating. Well, like my hero is oh. very motivating. I went through a period of time where I was coming home from bowling. I come home from bowling on Monday nights. You know how they do the loop. They just play it and mm -hmm. they do yeah. a loop. And yeah. every time when I would hit the road that leads up to my subdivision, okay. my hero would come on every time for like a month. And I would drive so slow so, so, that, by the song, right? yeah, so the that by the time I pulled in the house I only had yeah. to wait a couple of seconds for it to be over right yeah you know, it was just it was perfect yeah I love that song yeah me too when he was on Howard Stern he did that acoustically it was really oh, good gosh yeah I imagine so yeah. Everlong's really good that's another one he's done on Howard Stern acoustically too <sighs> so good so good monkey wrench one of my favorites. So good. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to do our favorite S movies? Okay, let's do that. Okay, why don't you go first? All right. So mine is Bueller. <laughs> Bueller. <laughs> One of my favorite movies. <laughs> favorite, favorite movies. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. All right. From back in 1986. When I looked Whoa. at him, I was like, oh my God, it was 1986. Oh my goodness. He was, he was such a young kid. He I was mean, a he baby. Was, he was adorable. He was. He was adorable, Matthew. You know, Barber. he basically adorable. looks the same. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's, he's salt and pepper. Yeah. 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 But he basically, I mean, He's not quite as baby smooth as he was, but <laughs> he looks basically the same. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to spend too much time on it. I just wanted to bring that up and the Ben Stein oh, Bueller gosh. thing. One of my favorite, but that my became, very, very, yeah, I, 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 mean, I do it all the time. Yeah. It, it's, it was in like the pop culture instantly. Oh yeah. It yeah. still is. I yeah. do that all the time. Yeah. But my favorite, favorite part uh -huh. is the parade. And him being on the float. It's really good. It's a really good part. <laughs> it really is. As a matter of fact, I just watched it just so I could be a little Did you? prepared for today. Yeah. Just that part. Just that part. Oh, God. And the <laughs> Sloan and Cameron are walking. Uh-huh. And Cameron's going, Yeah, Bueller ditched us. And she's going, No, 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 no. He wouldn't no. ditch us. Yeah. No, I think he went back to school. No, he wouldn't go back to school. Are yeah. You kidding me? And then all of a sudden in the background, you hear somebody on the microphone going, <laughs> I'm dedicating this to somebody. And it's like, oh my God, it's him. How somebody did he who do does, this? hasn't seen anything good today. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my. And then he, then he starts singing the Donkey Shane. Donkey Shane. Yeah. And we had talked about this, about Twist and Shout. Yeah. What a, what a great song. Mm -hmm. I, I just love that whole, that whole scene. And then his father is in his office. He looks down because there's a parade going by the office, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it's his kid. He yeah. has no idea. And yeah. he's dancing, just twist and shout, you know? So funny. Love there, that. There are so many good parts in that movie. Oh, yeah. My favorite, one of my favorite parts. I don't know if it's my favorite. One of my favorite parts is when the principal breaks into their house. Oh, my God, with the dog. Yeah. yeah. And, and Jennifer Gray's character is like... 
to whoever's down there, if you have any thoughts, you know, I have syphilis. <laughs> Jeannie. <laughs> she kicks him Jeannie in the face. Yeah. yeah, then she kicks yeah. him in the face, screams and I know. Kicks him in the face. <laughs> I, I think a couple of times, right? She kicks him in the face a couple of times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So many great scenes. There's so many good parts. Oh my God. How about with Jennifer Gray and Charlie Sheen when they're in the police station? Yeah, yeah, making out. Well, this is before that. <laughs> before this that. Before that. And he says to her something to the effect of, um, well, I know somebody. And she says to him, she's clenching her fist and she's going, if you say Ferris Bueller, oh, you know the guy? It's like, ah! <laughs> Another yeah. great part. I like she when they're racing good, home. Yeah, some, yeah I was, was going to say, she had some great parts, <sighs> and that's one of them. <laughs> and mom's in the car. Oh, and she's my driving, and she's, and she's screaming. She's screaming. Oh, and how about the Ferrari? Oh, the poor Ferrari. That poor Ferrari. Oh my God. Poor Ferrari. Get the crap kicked out of it, and I then know. it flies out of that window. And I'll never <sighs> forget the first time I saw that. I was like, oh, no! my God. I know yeah that was that was a huge like shocking moment back then yeah that car yeah yeah what a great movie uh, it was a great movie holds up holds it, up it does one of my favorite lines yep. of that movie is when he goes to pick Sloan up out of school as her and he's dressed as her father he's got the overcoat on and the hat and everything and she comes down and the principal's standing up on the steps and she greets him and Ferris just kisses, just gets right in there and gives her a big old sloppy kiss. <laughs> and the principal's like, close family. Yeah. <laughs> That's so wrong. Oh, you know, his secretary in that movie is the same I love Rodney her. Dangerfield yes, secretary yes, back yes, to yes. school. When yeah. back to school and she's, she's at the college <laughs> taking notes for him. <laughs> oh, Mr. Thornton Mellon's private secretary. secretary. <laughs> Uh, I know she had such a great voice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She got a lot of parts like that, right like in the eighties mm -hmm. and the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she was good mm -hmm. for sure. That movie was a lot of fun. My movie was not a lot of fun. The movie that I picked. Oh, okay. It, Which one did you it, pick? I picked Fight Club, Edward okay. Norton and Brad Pitt from uh, nineteen ninety nine. I actually don't know anything about it, so it's going to be all you on this. Oh one. my goodness. Uh, yeah, well, I, I know who the two guys are, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, Ed Ed Norton plays an insomniac office worker for a major car company. He, he's very dissatisfied with his life. He's basically a loner and a, and a wild consumer. His apartment looks like an IKEA catalog. There's like no personality to it whatsoever. He's just very driven by this consumerism, and he meets Brad Pitt who's basically the antithesis of that. He lives in a dilapidated house. He makes soap for a living. He makes soap? Yeah, soap. S-O-A-P? Yeah, soap. soap. Okay. They form this fight club together to kind of wake men up from their brainwashed consumerism and get them back to their <laughs> like anim more animalistic caveman roots. What kind of fighting are we talking? Are we talking boxing fighting or are We're we talking basically like kickboxing? Like, no, like, it's like boxing, but it's like street brawling. Oh, okay. No gloves. No, no gloves. gloves. Bare knuckle. Okay. And okay. they're just like kicking the crap out of each other. And then they it evolves into this kind of project mayhem where they're trying to take out like credit card companies and erase debt. And they're doing petty acts of vandalism, taking out chain coffee shops. And they kind of branch out and have these fight clubs in lots of different major cities. Things. It becomes a thing. A very famous part of it was like the first rule of fight club is you don't talk about fight club. The second rule of fight club is you don't talk about fight club because they were trying to keep it underground, but it kept growing and growing as yeah. more and more men became involved with this. The Ed Norton character is an insomniac for six months. And he was talking about when you're an insomniac, you're never really asleep and you're never really awake. Through the movie, you kind of find out that this guy doesn't really know who he is. He has this relationship with, the, with Helena Bonham Carter's character named Marla. She's kind of an interloper in his life, and at first he hates her. But she kind of just worms her way into his life and Brad Pitt's life. And Brad Pitt's name is Tyler Durden. 
And he becomes this underground fight club cult leader, basically. And throughout the movie, you're just hearing about Tyler Durden, Tyler Durden over and over. And as the movie progresses, Ed Norton's character, who's the narrator, becomes more and more disenfranchised with this lifestyle. And he sees that it's actually hurting people. And Marla kind of comes in and forms a relationship with Tyler Durden and Ed Norton's character is like, why are you doing this? What are you getting out of this? Because he treats her like crap and the whole thing. Well, it turns out that through this insomnia, Ed Norton's character has created Brad Pitt. Okay. Ty he is Tyler Durden and he figures this out that he has created this multiple personality okay. and that it must be stopped because it's just, this whole thing is way out of control. And the so way he realizes it. Yeah, he starts to realize it. I mean, he retraces all his steps and he's like, I feel I'm having all this deja vu. I feel like I've been here before. <laughs> and then he asks Marla, finally, what's my name? And she's like, Tyler Durden, Tyler Durden. And he's like, holy crap. And you just watch him like freak out that this personality that he's exhibiting now has been asleep longer and longer. And the cult leader, Tyler Durden, has been awake most of the time and is running the show. And he's this now he has to grapple with trying to take control back over this personality that has just wreaked havoc and is really dangerous. So does that pretty much end Brad Pitt's part in this movie at that point? Well, he's trying to figure out how to stop him because he's like, I know you're not real. I know you're not real. And he's like, that ain't going to do it, buddy. You know what I mean? Like he's taunting him. So he has him. this guy talking to him? Yes, he's talking to him. He's taunting him. He's kicking the crap out of him even. They're fighting. And he, he comes to realize that he's not there. He's kicking the crap out of himself. Wow. At one point, Brad Pitt's character has a gun. And he's like, the gun isn't in your hand. The gun is in my hand. And so he realizes that he's the one holding the gun. And he points it at Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt's like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He shoots him and nothing happens. So then wow. he's like, I've got to shoot myself. Wow. So he shoots himself. It's really shocking when he does it. He shoots this himself. This really gets deep, boy. Yeah. And he, he, he shoots himself in like the jaw or something. It's really weird. It must have gone in like, whatever. The Brad Pitt character is now gone. Wow. And he's all messed up. And the, the, like, the last shot of the movie is him standing there holding his jaw in place, holding hands with Marla, and they're watching the destruction of all these credit card buildings are just collapsing in the background because his guys and everything were blowing up these buildings. It's like, this is intense. This is really intense. Wow. And it was a really shocking movie back then. I mean, this is 1999 this happened. This movie kind of took everything by storm. That's why I'm really surprised that you've never heard of it before. No, no, not at all. I, I know the people who were in it. By yeah. the way, I like her a lot. I yes. liked her Ocean's 8 very much. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. been in a lot of stuff. So it was it's an like- a movie when you it, think about it. It, yeah. it is. It is yeah. old. It was based off of a book and they, you know, they learned how to fight, boxing, taekwondo, all that kind of stuff. And Brad Pitt had the cap taken off of his tooth to show his broken tooth for the movie, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they make were, him look tough, right? Yeah. Make him look tough. I mean, he was crazy. He had a shaved head at one point. He was wearing a fur coat. He was completely shot out for this movie. Um, <laughs> All in. Was and Martin good at uh, boxing? Was he good at fighting? Ford. I mean, I could see Brad Pitt being good. He, he, he played a yeah. bare knuckle boxer yeah. in Snatch. Yeah. 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 I mean... I mean, I can see his body type, but Ed Norton, I mean. Okay, he... so have you ever seen American History X? Excuse no. me? <laughs> okay, so Ed played a reformed neo-Nazi in American History X. The, the promo for the movie was Ed Norton standing in the street with his shirt off and his arms held out, spread eagle, with a giant swastika on his I think I left remember pack. seeing something about and that. He would, I didn't watch it, though. No, That's, but he yeah. was jacked for this movie. And it basically is telling the story of a, a neo-Nazi who kind of wakes up from that. He's indoctrinated, and then he wakes up, and he tries to save his little brother from becoming a part of this and, and whatever. But so for this movie, this movie happened right after that movie, and he had to lose all that muscle to be in this movie because they didn't want 
him to be jacked. So he had to lose like 15 pounds of muscle to be in this movie. Oh. But he, I mean, the point of the movie wasn't really that you had to be awesome at it. The point of the movie was that you got tough by taking the beating rather than giving the beating. And one other thing I want to say, because we have a tie in here, that Edward Norton played Bruce Banner in The Incredible Hulk, the Marvel movie, The Incredible Hulk. Okay. And it was- I remember that. Yeah, it was about 2008 and it was around the time that um, Iron Man had come out. So- Oh. Yeah, yeah. they were starting to percolate the Marvel Cinematic Universe during this cool. time. Yeah. And Tony Stark did have a cameo in the end of that movie. So Robert Downey Jr. was in it, so. There you have it. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about Brad Pitt. You want to talk about Friends? Sure. Married to Jen Aniston for a while there. Yeah. Yeah. Actually was on the show too. Yes. And his character did not like Rachel Green. Not at all. I don't, they had that club. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And Ross talked- was the only other member. <laughs> <laughs> we had previously talked that we wanted to talk about Friends. Yeah. So um, yeah. 10 seasons, 236 episodes. Fun- it was a phenomenon. Show. Another theme song that I really like a lot. Mm-hmm. Din, 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 din. I Completely love that. recognizable. And you got to do the clapping. You got to do the clapping. Of course I do. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes exactly. exactly. So Gen- anyway. Jennifer Aniston was in a movie with Jason Sudeikis called We're the Millers. The premise is very strange, but it leads them to being in a motor home driving to pick up a bunch of weed. And uh, and one of the outtakes, oh, I think I've seen it. Did you see that? And in one of the outtakes, they played the theme song, and did she's they? just like, oh, <laughs> and they're all doing the clapping <laughs> right in her face and everything. It was pretty funny. But that's how iconic it is that it leaks into everything. Exactly. Know? James Corden had a little thing that he did on his show when they were doing that. HBO Max special. The reunion. Yeah. yeah the reunion. Mm-hmm. He goes on the Warner Brothers set and he picks them up in, in a tram car. Uh huh. He says to them, like, real casually, do you mind if I play some some music? Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then they do pretty much a carpool karaoke. With yeah. Them. Yeah. But I love that show. I great. love that show. I cannot think of one episode that I did not like. No. I loved every episode. I liked everyone. On that show. Yeah. And those are gotta, also ones that you can watch over and over and, and over, over again. And we do. Yep. And we do. Yep. And that's one of those shows, like I had said about Everybody Loves Raymond, mm-hmm. that you have a half hour before something that you want right. to watch, like, a, like a, a ball game for me. Right. And I go through and it's like, oh, let me just catch one of the episodes of Friends because I got a half hour to wait for the ball game, you know? Mm-hmm. But I want to talk about ball game. I wanted to tell you this really cute little story. There's a baseball player. His name is Wilmer Flores. He played on my Mets. Mm-hmm. He was signed from Venezuela when he was 16 years old. They brought him to the United States. He didn't know any English whatsoever. He started watching Friends, and that's oh. how he learned the language. To the point that he loved Friends so much, that's his walk-up song. He's now on the San Francisco Giants, and last year when I saw him, I was I was like, yeah, wonder if that's still his walk-up song. It is. It's that's sweet. That's that's a very sweet story, but that's not unique to him. I've seen specials and where they go around the world and talk about what friends means to them in all these different countries. And exactly. lots of people learned English by watching friends. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's funny to listen to people with all different kinds of accents going, how you doing? You know, <laughs> how, you doing? Uh, how you doing? You knew, Do you know that Joey's use of going commando is what actually made it into the Oxford English Dictionary. They put it in because of him. him no doing kidding. Going Commando. Yeah. Because no you had mentioned Going Commando a couple episodes ago. Yeah. So yeah, I wanted yeah, to yeah, make yeah. sure I got that in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Um, the, during the interviews on that special that they did, the reunion, they had asked who is most unlike their character. Mm-hmm. And everybody pretty much pointed to Lisa Kudrow yeah. that she's most least. And then yeah. they said, who's most like their character? And it was definitely Matt LeBlanc. It was uh, most yeah. like his character. Yeah. So, 
Well, yeah. he cool. had that show, Man with a Plan. Mm -hmm. And he yeah. was basically a grown up, more responsible version Joey. of Joey Tribbiani. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. You know, but that's all right. What's funny yeah. about that Lisa Kudrow thing is, though, even though she's very smart in real life and she's not like her character at all, mm -hmm. she and her friend got drunk and wrote Smelly Cat. That's actually <laughs> her song. And he, it eventually got written into the show. But that's that's like her so her song. Isn't that funny? So good. She's Smelly so Cat. Good. Oh, They're my goodness. So good. And that's in the pop culture, too, Smelly Cat. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Love them all. You're so love good. All the people that came on, Tom Selleck. Yeah, yeah loved he was good. All that. All Paul that. Rudd was in there. Paul Rudd was there. Yeah. Yeah, he was really yeah, he good. He was there for a little while. Yeah, the casting yeah. director wrote "Dreamy" on his <laughs> headshot. That's why they had him marry Phoebe's because they wanted him to stick around. There, there's yeah. so many little things like that. Like Monica and Chandler were never supposed to be in a relationship. They, they were supposed to be a one nighter. But really? when, yeah, but when it's revealed that it's them in bed, the crowd went bonkers Ballistic, for like yeah. a half a minute. Like yeah. they had to like really wait. Like I, they were like, whoa, people really dig this. So they yeah. started to work on making them a couple because that was never the intention. But oh, they were a great couple. That. Worked out well. <laughs> yeah, it did. Do you remember the episode where uh, Monica proposes to Chandler? Oh my God. I, was, I did not expect that. I mean, there was like a buildup of when this is all going to happen. Yeah. Wow. And he's running around all over the place. Yeah. And comes back home and there's candles all over the apartment. Yeah. And he just walks in and like, I can feel it now. I've got chills. I, it's choking me up. I know. <laughs> and then she takes the knee and it oh just, I was just like oh my bawling. God. I was so <sighs> happy. Yeah. Yeah. It's choking me up. Yeah. Yeah. It was so sweet. And like, she couldn't even do it. She couldn't get through it. And she's like, this is why girls don't do this. You know? <laughs> That's a great episode. Oh, it's so sweet. Yeah. You know, which one's my favorite? Which one? The one that they played that trivia game oh, because yes. they were the, the apartment thing that they were yes. playing for the apartment switch. Yeah. And Ross is at the board and he's given the questions. He does that so well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Miss Chenandler Bung. <laughs> <laughs> the TV guy. That's right. <laughs> yes. That's hysterical. Oh, and oh, Joey's God, favorite, favorite food one. was oh, sandwiches. Sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite. That you know, my favorite. they come in. Chandler I and Joey. I love all the episodes, I know. but that's my favorite. Yeah. They come in on that white dog. Uh -huh. yeah, Conquering yeah, yeah. Heroes. <laughs> that white dog. That was actually Jennifer Aniston's dog. That was hers. No and kidding. she gave it to them for the production. Yeah. That's hysterical. She got it as a gift and she gave it. Could you imagine? That's like, hysterical. Have this massive white dog. Could we use it? <laughs> you know, for when Joey starts yes, buying all that useless stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How oh, awesome was funny. that? Yeah. But speaking of that, um, Ross and Rachel was oh. a huge theme. Yeah. During the whole time. The well, whole they time. won't be the whole week. And now I have a question for you. Oh my God. Okay. Were they on a break? <laughs> we were on a break. <laughs> were they? My opinion. Yes, yeah. they were on a break. Yeah. How about my, you? What you? My opinion was they were on a break. However. <laughs> you don't get breaks? You You get breaks, but considering the nature of their relationship yeah would it have been prudent to just I mean, hold off exactly doing exactly. anything we have some history here yes yes <laughs> yeah. there is a on and off kind of nature to their relationship yeah. they do yeah. they make rash decisions would it have been the thing to do to immediately go <laughs> out and sleep with somebody else yeah yeah no, I, know. I don't think so and i no, think that I might have been the problem it's like if you were in a relationship with somebody where it was like, okay, this is it. We're, we're done. And you could be fairly confident that that was the case. Mm. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> but with Ross and Rachel, come on. They're their lobster. Yeah. 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 The lobster. <laughs> I have a question for you. Another question. Oh God. Okay. Okay. Who, who was your favorite friend? I loved Phoebe. Mm -hmm. She was just so wacky. I loved her. Mm hmm I just waited for her to do something next. You know, it's like, oh, what's she going to do now? <laughs> you know? Yeah. How about you? 
I think Chandler was my favorite. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause he was always, he was always funny. He was always, all funny. always funny. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, he was always funny and he, he seemed like the one that was really kind of the glue almost okay. holding everything together. Okay. You know, he was like the bridge really. I, I know people think that Ross kind of was because I kind of thought he was yeah. too, but Maybe like Chandler is the bridge and Ross is the glue. Yeah, probably. There you go. <laughs> yeah. He su could successfully navigate that whole business. Mm -hmm. You know, Ross was there because he had ties. He was roommates with Chandler in college and he was Monica's brother. But brother. Chandler, yeah. not by not being related, he was the bridge between like Joey and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. You know? All right. I we just analyzed it. Yeah, we did. We just <laughs> analyzed it. So having said that now... Which friend would you be? Monica. Which cast member? Monica? Definitely. Yeah. How about you? I think I would probably have been Rachel. Yeah. I think we got it right. Yeah. So I just want to mention the ending. Okay. Because it went on for so long. And the tendency, I think, can be to have the build up to the end and then get disappointed. That's happened to me many times. Oh, yeah. And it was a show that... I didn't feel disappointed by the ending. I didn't feel cheated Not by the all. ending. Not at all. I felt I like everybody wound up in the place that they were supposed to be right. and that you had hope for the future. You weren't like, oh, really? You know, this is what the end was? Like how I met your mother. Like I the was Sopranos. Like, like the Sopranos. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was worried about it, but I'm I'm very satisfied with the way they, they wrapped up They had up great the writers. They did. You had to know that it was going to be a great ending, mm -hmm. a happy ending. Yeah, a happy ending. It was a happy ending, but it was a, a feasible one. It was plausible. Yeah. It made sense. I yeah. think a lot of times with these endings, especially of like these sitcom shows, the ending doesn't make sense. Like Seinfeld, like they wind up in jail. Yeah, that's really that was ridiculous. That's another one. I was you know? not crazy about that end. That's like, no. uh, and there was a big buildup to that too. There was, yep. you know, and it was just kind of like, oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm very happy. Cheers had a good you. ending. Cheers did. That's yes. another one. Had a great ending. Yes. But yeah, I'm satisfied with friends too. That was Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. You want to wrap this thing the F up? <laughs> uh yes that's yes. that's a great idea okay all right so we appreciate you listening with that we're out of here thank you very much we'll see you next week <laughs>